as the community of St Mary's at Sprotborough. I hope you're having a good day. But what counts as a good day? I think it's a day when you've got something to get up for, a purpose, a task. Endless leisure without the resources to enjoy it is not a prospect to be relished, is it? Indeed, come to that, endless leisure, even with the resources to enjoy it, is not all it's cracked up to be. Those who've been furloughed over recent months will probably agree with me. Once you've tackled all those outstanding household chores that have been put off for years, and you're at a loose end, a return to something fruitful and worthwhile must feel very welcome. It's the way we're wired up. We need purpose, the opportunity to do something fruitful, purposeful, worthwhile. I got a furlough letter. It was several hours before it was discovered that it had been an administrative error, but those hours were very disconcerting. The family said, what would you do all day? I didn't know. It was deeply unsettling, the thought of having nothing to get up for. Ministry is not something you can just switch off like that, though. We're going to listen to a story that Jesus told about the kingdom that he had come to bring and about the value of having purpose. It's a reading from Matthew's Gospel, chapter 20. A reading from Matthew chapter 20. Jesus said, For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire labourers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the labourers for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace, and he said to them, You also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock he went out and found others standing around, and he said to them, Why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You also go into the vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the labourers and give them their pay beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to the last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. In that story that we just heard, Jesus describes the way his kingdom, his reign in the lives of his followers, operates. And it features different groups of labourers waiting to be hired. 
sat in the market square. It would have been a familiar sight in the days that Jesus lived in. Like the dreaded school sports team selection, the fittest and healthiest got picked first and they have a full day of graft in the vineyard. The weakest, the oldest, the least able get passed over. Their self-esteem dropping with every hira that passes them by. But unlike the school playing field, there is more at stake here than just self-esteem. No work means no food for you and for those who depend on you. And so they sit there feeling worried and worthless, concerned that they will have nothing to take back for the family. The question I find myself asking is, who had the better day of it? Those sat idle and overlooked, or those who had certainty that they were going to get a good supper and had a worthwhile and purposeful task to do. I know which I prefer. But the grass is always greener. And those working all day long supposed that it must be quite nice to sit idle and have a leisurely chat with others in the marketplace. They forget or don't appreciate the powerlessness of feeling overlooked and of fearing that you won't eat. Physical strength means that they've never been in that position. Whilst the scene at the start of the story might feel very familiar to Jesus' first hearers, the scene at the end is shocking in its unexpectedness. All got the same. They had all been thinking in terms of wages, something earned. They did less, they should get less. We did more. We should get paid more. But God's provision isn't a wage, a reward for how hard we work. It is a gift, something unrelated to what we do. We bulk at that. We struggle to accept that we can't and don't earn. God's goodness to us. Most people imagine that the more we do for God, the more we do what is good, the bigger and better our reward will be. It is not so. That leads to another question. If everyone gets the same in the end, why bother? Why not just do the bare minimum? turn up for hire as late as possible, intent to get the most return for the least graft. Sign up to serve Jesus at the very end of your life, as many folk did in times past. Perhaps we should return to our earlier question. Who had the better day of it? The ones who worked all day, knowing that their reward was secure and that they would get food and who had a purposeful time of it, or the one hired at the end of the day after hours of anxiety and purposelessness. I know which I would rather be. It was St Augustine who said, his service is perfect freedom. What does that mean? God gives us a task to do which matches our passions, our capacity and our character. In doing that, we discover that we're doing exactly what we were created to do. 
whatever that purpose is, we are more alive doing it than not doing it. Paid or voluntary, menial or managerial, distinguished or disregarded, sacred or secular. By working for this master, we find at the end of the day that our service is recognised and honoured equally. That our need is equally met. Cleaner or consultant, bishop or bin operative, bus driver or barrister, high octane or low skilled, your service matters. Black or white, privileged or deprived, all are valued equally and all treated the same. That is the way of the kingdom and that is the king we claim as Christians to follow. Can we accept the grace that treats all people as valued for who they are rather than for what they do. And dare we live in a way which reflects that in our own dealings with others. What would life look like in this kingdom where the last are indeed first, and the first last. power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Lord, we thank you for welcome, welcoming us into your family, for treating us as special and forgiving us when we let you down. We pray for all our Christian brothers and sisters worshipping today all over the world. It will be different at this time. For some, it will mean worshipping alone because of enforced isolation or because church gatherings have not been able to resume. For others who are able to gather together, it is not the same. We long for a time when we can be physically close together, when we can sing joyfully to worship you. We pray for all those who are accessing this service online that they can feel close to you. Father, we pray for our world. We ask that you will give your wisdom and guidance to all who make decisions about the future of the beautiful world that you created. Help us to protect and preserve our environment so that future generations will be able to enjoy clean water and clean air. We pray that governments will continue to fund and make policies that will protect the earth and all living things. Father, we pray for all those who need your healing at this time. We bring before you those who are ill, at home or in hospital, 
and those who are caring for them. As the number of COVID-19 cases rises, we pray that everyone will act responsibly in order to suppress the spread of the virus. We thank you, Lord, that you are with us in our time of suffering. Help us to know that one day you will come and make all things new. We thank you that you will be forming within us endurance, perseverance, character and hope. Lord, we ask that you will be with us in the week that lies ahead. May we listen to your still small voice guiding us each day. We know that we do not need to earn your reward and that you treat us all equally regardless of our failings and our weaknesses. We pray, Lord, that you grant us the humility to realise that everything is possible, the wisdom to discern you hold the future, the confidence to remember that you are always in full control, the faith and understanding that you will never leave us. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love this day and always. Amen. <laughs>